Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another Wake Up with Ashland. Um, my name is Cameron Walpole. I'm the manager of tours and education. Um, we have switched to doing our Wake Up with Ashland series just to Thursdays. We are reopening to the public in kind of a phased manner and look out on social media for some updates on that, uh, that later this week. Um, today we're outside, as you can see, because it's gorgeous out and we are going to kind of provide a little bit of solace for your timelines. <laughs> um, Henry Clay found a lot of kind of quiet and solace here at Ashland um, and we kind of want to provide that this morning. So we're actually going to take a short walk on what was one of Henry Clay's historic walks. So I'm going to turn the camera around here. Throughout Ashland, just to kind of give you a sense of where we are, here's the back of the mansion. Welcome everybody who's just joining us. And if you would, go ahead and go to the comment section and let us know where you're watching from. So we're here kind of at the back of the mansion. We're looking at the pleasure grounds. The pleasure grounds are, is this big open field where you don't see a whole lot of trees or anything. That always would have been a place for celebration, um, for gatherings, for tennis parties when Henry Clay's great granddaughters were here. Um, so this has always kind of been a place of reflection and, you know, maybe uh, celebration. And it borders one of the historic walking paths. Um, let's see, Wood Simpson says, what do the ribbons on the trees mean? They're just being, they've been, um, identified this week. We had some arborists come out this week and help us with tree identification. And um, as some of you may know, we are certified as an arboretum. So you may see ribbons throughout. Some people worry that that means we're cutting down trees. We most certainly are not going to be cutting down trees. Um, there are just some that maybe need a little bit of extra attention or something like that. So that's why there are ribbons on the trees. Good morning, Gaynell Warren, Shirley Hightower, Diana, Liz. Um, welcome everybody. We are now on one of the historic walks here at Ashland. If you've been to Ashland, you probably have seen that there are a lot of walking paths. Hey Matt, good morning. There are a lot of walking paths throughout the estate. Some of them are original, some of them are not. Some of them are, are newer and they've been kind of used for exercise. But the one that we're walking on right now is one of Henry Clay's historic walking paths. And this is kind of an important um, artifact from the past, this path, because you can really visualize Henry Clay walking these paths, thinking about the big issues of his day, um, asking the big questions. He's got Ashland here as kind of a a microcosm of the rest of the nation in terms of agriculture and industry. And so he's kind of thinking um, about the future of the nation as he's taking these big walks. So Henry Clay's walking path is what we're on right now. You're also gonna just take some time to look up and see this is one of the Norway spruces on the property. Henry Clay had trees brought in from all over the place to make Ashland kind of look unique in the scope of, of Lexington. But what we really are gonna talk about today, see Mary Pentecost is watching. Um, what we're really gonna talk about today are the sculptures on the ground. So you may see that there's running buffalo clover. I'm just kind of getting distracted by all the cool things. Running buffalo clover, which we're gonna walk through. It's perfectly um, good to walk through the running buffalo clover. Um, there are only a few places in the state that have it. It's an endangered plant. So we're going to walk through the running buffalo clover here. But I want to talk about the contemporary art that's on the property. So we're going to, we're kind of approaching publisher. This is the name of this, this sculpture. It's a real juxtaposition between the historic landscape and this contemporary sculpture, right? It's kind of crazy. Um, you see 
things very much like they would have been when Henry Clay was here. And then you're kind of confronted with this massive sculpture. It's really striking, it stands out, it's bright white. It's a pretty incredible um, feat to, to have these enormous uh, metal structures that are just kind of tenuously placed. Um, so why do we have these sculptures on our property? Well, there are a few reasons. One is because they are by a Lexington native artist named John Henry. John Henry has exhibited his work all over the world and this series is part of his series Monumental. Um, and we thought it was fitting for Ashland um, and fitting for Henry Clay as a monumental figure. Now, John Henry, when he created these sculptures, did not have Henry Clay in mind, um, but the massive nature of them and the way it kind of makes you look at the landscape differently is really intentional for why we brought it here. It kind of takes you out of the place, the kind of quiet, nature of the place and makes you think, right? It makes you think about the role of modern or of contemporary art in a historic setting, but it also makes you think about Henry Clay's role in American politics. He towered over the American political scene for over 50 years. Similar, similarly to how this sculpture publisher is towering over the trees here at Ashland. And we're gonna get a little bit closer so you can kind of see some of the detail. But something that strikes me when I look at it is how it looks like it could fall apart at any time, right? It's, things are just kind of stacked and leaning against each other, but it's well supported. And that's kind of like the compromises Henry Clay's compromises, they don't seem to make sense. How could this possibly work? Henry Clay's having to work with parties that don't ag agree with each other. They don't um, see eye to eye on really anything. They seem potentially dangerous to some people, these compromises, and yet they work. They're strong. They hold the country together. Um, so that's one of the reasons this particular piece stands where it does. It's also, it looks different every single way you look at it. And we like to think about history that way too. So your perspective, looking at this sculpture, it looks totally different from over here, right? Than it did from when we were on the other side. When we look at history from multiple perspectives, it changes our view of it. When we look at Henry Clay from multiple perspectives, it changes our view of him. So that's very intentional as well. Now, there are two other sculptures on the property by John Henry, and they do similar work. So there's one that's a little further away on the property, closer to the front of the house, um, Rocher du Diamant. It's kind of a tangled mess. It's bright yellow, so it makes you think about um, you know, it also kind of takes you out of the historic kind of quiet nature um, of Ashland and makes you think about the, the, you know, the chaotic nature of politics during Henry Clay's time. There's also another one called La Tour that's near the front of the property. And similarly to this one, it looks like it's how on earth could it possibly be standing? This is the one that I wanted to show you though because of the massive scale. But remember, this is a 17 acre um, estate that we still have, so I'm not gonna be able to show you all of them today, um, but I do encourage you all to come out and check them out. Um, we're gonna head now back to the historic walking path, and I'm gonna ask if anybody has any questions. You can hear and probably see some cars that are going by, that's Richmond Road. That road would have always been one of the borders of the estate. So we have 17 acres today, which is quite a lot in the middle of um, Lexington, but Henry Clay had up to 660 acres at his time. So this was a large estate and farm. 
Okay, as we walk down Henry Clay's walking path, does anybody have any questions? Okay, if not, you're welcome to, um, if you have questions later, you can always ask, um, but I wanted to kind of give you a, a little bit of solace this morning, looking at this art, just kind of gives you a little bit of um, perspective. Um, and we'll end there. I thank you all for watching. Thanks for, to the Dupree Mutual Funds for sponsoring Wake Up With Ashland. We look forward to seeing you next Thursday and look out later this week for an updated schedule of our operations. Thanks so much.